all over the country talking about saving with Geico. But that's the important bit, isn't it? Showing up, saying, hello, fancy a nice chat. And then we talk like two old friends about sticky buns and all the savings you could get by bundling your home and car insurance. But here's the real secret. Eye contact. Do you feel that? We just had a moment. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. Are you ready? I'm ready. Look, I'm eating right and everything. You know, rapper Biz Marquis lost nearly 50 pounds on Celebrity Fit Club. He lost 140 total after being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. But sadly, Biz passed away from health complications at 57. Yeah, the tributes are pouring in. Tracy Ellis Ross posted memories of his appearance on Blackish. Thank you so much for doing this. Come yeah. on, oh, so cool. you know do. And LL Cool J choked back tears remembering his friend. Used to always hang out you know, back in the days. Happening now. It's the first day of school at Castle Hills Elementary School. Coming up, a look at the safety protocols in place this new school year. Week two of the Otis McCain trial is now underway and more witnesses taking the stand. We'll take you inside the courtroom coming up. Storms are headed our way. I'll let you know when they'll get here and we'll talk rain chances for the rest of the week. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, believe it or not, it's back to the classroom today for some students in Northeast ISD. Today, the first day of school for kids at Castle Hills Elementary. And it comes on the same day the American Academy of Pediatrics announces new recommendations for the new school year. They are now recommending that all students ages two on up wear a mask in school settings. Our Tiffany Wirtz spoke with NEISD today about their 2021 protocols and why they say their hands are tied. They know that they have to wash their hands constantly. We are keeping distance as best as possible. We're respecting those who still want to wear the mask. It's the first day of school at Castle Hills Elementary School. Overall, families are just so thankful and grateful to be back in the school. Last year, students had virtual classes. This year, all the students are back to in-person learning. There are 22 students in a classroom. While there's still safety protocols in place, like... Well, at the front door, we still have have our self screener for um, the parents and the students. We still have san hand sanitizer stations throughout the school. This year, masks are optional. About maybe 15 to 20 percent of our students are still wearing masks. Governor Abbott issued an executive order saying that we cannot mandate masks. So mask usage will not be required for all students and all staff. Aubrey Chancellor with the district says if parents want their children to wear a mask, teachers will not be responsible in making sure the student is wearing their mask. But it would be difficult for the teacher to remember or know which child should or should not be in. Today, the American Academy of Pediatrics released a new COVID-19 guidance for schools. It urges all who are eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The group also says everyone over the age of two should continue to wear a mask in school settings, regardless of vaccination status. But even with these recommendations, unfortunately, our hands are tied to what our governor uh, mandates when it comes to the mask. So there's nothing that we can do about that recommendation. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And coming up tonight at six, it is confusing. I'm going to have more about that recommendation from the American Academy of Pediatrics and what one local expert says is happening here and how it does make sense to put masks back on kids this school year. As COVID-19 trends take a worrying turn here and around the county, the city of San Antonio is still trying to get people vaccinated. Nearly three quarters of the county, 12 and over, have received at least one vaccine. But Metro Health says more than 100,000 people are overdue for their second shot. And people up to 35 have lower vaccination rates. Today's effort to get people vaccinated at the San Antonio Zoo's parking garage, where people scored two free tickets to the zoo's Dragon Forest exhibit. There's multiple things we can do with Metro Health, so we're, we've talked about doing this one, what the next one could be the zoo, uh, the next one could be the train ride in the park, so there's lots of options for us to do. A health program manager for Metro Health says clinics with incentives seem to generate more interest. The zoo's promotional clinic will go on through Thursday. It is not just here at home where the coronavirus is of concern. It is re-emerging. Cases are increasing from coast to coast. Experts fear the U.S. is heading in the wrong direction with the Delta variant tearing through unvaccinated communities. ABC's Rena Roy 
has the latest. The Delta variant tightening its grip on the U.S. with nearly every state seeing a surge in cases. COVID is still here right now and we're still fighting it. Some local officials now doubling down once again. The mayor of Orange County, Florida, asking people to mask up in crowded places regardless of vaccination status. I'm asking our residents to continue to protect themselves and others by voluntarily wearing facial coverings while indoors in crowded spaces. Officials renewing their calls for more Americans to get their shots, with cases up 158% nationwide over the past month. Virtually all hospitalizations and deaths are occurring among unvaccinated Americans. These tragedies are avoidable. COVID impacting the Olympics in Tokyo. U.S. alternate gymnast 18-year-old Kara Aker, one of several athletes who have tested positive for the virus. Her father tells ABC affiliate KMBC she has to quarantine for 10 days in a hotel room there. She says she's bored and just looking forward to coming home. The biggest disappointment is that you know, this takes her out of it completely. The Delta variant is also affecting the stock market, with the Dow opening sharply lower Monday morning amid concerns the variants could affect the global economic recovery. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We have some new details in a fatal shooting over the weekend. A man shot and killed at an apartment complex in the medical center has now been identified. He is 26-year-old Malcolm Ray Everett II. The 43-year-old, rather 43-year-old Tavris Anderson has been charged in Everett's murder. The shooting happened yesterday morning at the Addison Apartments on Babcock Road. Police say that the two men had been drinking, then they got into an argument. Anderson told investigators at one point Everett charged at him trying to fight. He says he gave warning to Everett to leave him alone or he would shoot and claims he ended up shooting Everett in the chest in self-defense. The San Antonio police searching for a suspect in the double in a double shooting overnight. They say two men were shot while they were repairing cars outside a home in the 200 block of Seralvo on the west side. It was about two this morning. One man shot in the back, the other shot in the leg. Bullets also hit the cars and a neighbor's front door. The victims are expected to be OK. Investigators say Neither were saying much about what happened. The search continuing for a pair of robbery suspects. Crime Stoppers need some help identifying the two people that you see here on the screen. They're accused of threatening a 19 year old man with a gun and stealing his car. It happened July 12th at the Westwood apart Plaza Apartments that is off of Westwood Drive. Highway 90. The suspects reportedly fired three shots while getting away. If you recognize these guys or you have any information, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Some tense moments in court as the second week of the trial of Otis McCain continues today. Today we heard more about what happened right after McCain's arrest, including arguments on the consent given to search two locations and a vehicle. That consent given by McCain's wife, Erica Hernandez, joins us from just outside of the courtroom with the latest on that. Erica? All right, obviously we're having some sort of problem with Erica's microphone there. Christian Fields, McCain's wife, when he was arrested, gave consent to a homicide detective to search two locations and her vehicle. The interpretation of those consent forms led to a heated debate between the defense and the prosecution. Let's listen a little bit to that debate. Excuse me, he asked me for a response. Don't talk to me, talk to the judge. Don't now, the testimony was allowed, and Detective Dwayne Brannon said Fields gave consent to search her home, an Econo Lodge room where they were staying, and her car. This consent was all given when they were pulled over on November 21st and McCain was arrested. Detective Brannon said while most people ask why they were detained, Fields didn't say anything. After introducing myself, there was really no other correspondence between she and I other than uh, me reading the forms to her, her gather or her signing consent to search. And then there's a dialect between she and I concerning the, the diaper bag. Other than that, that was it. The testimony is over for the day. It will resume tomorrow at 1.30. Again, you can watch all of this testimony on KSAT.com.
It is a grueling journey in search of a better life. And this morning, the U.S. Border Patrol Del Rio sector stopped some 300 undocumented migrants in their tracks. In a tweet, Chief Patrol Agent for the Del Rio sector, Austin Scarrow, said the group consisting of people from Cuba, Venezuela, and Haiti started as several smaller groups that came together as one to surrender. He says among those stopped were single adults, family units, pregnant women, and unaccompanied minors from all three countries. They've since been moved to various processing facilities. Just days ahead of a critical test vote, President Biden made another push for a bipartisan $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan that he supports. Just days ahead of a crucial test vote, President Biden made another push for a bipartisan $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan that he supports. We should be united in one thing, passage of the bipartisan infrastructure framework, which we shook hands on. Negotiators of the bipartisan infrastructure deal are trying to iron out details, including how they'll fund the almost $600 billion in new spending. They need to get that done ahead of a mandatory test vote Wednesday, where proponents will need to demonstrate they can secure the 60 votes needed for it to advance. Senate Democrats are working on their $3.5 trillion so-called human infrastructure plan. They need to show that all 50 Democrats are aligned in passing the massive budget bill by Wednesday. Dems moving forward with a budget reconciliation process that would allow that plan to pass without any GOP votes. These steps will enhance our productivity raising wages without raising prices. That won't increase inflation. It will take the pressure off of inflation. Neither the bipartisan nor the budget reconciliation bills have actually been written or been run through formal cost estimates. Well, we're still working on it. Uh, Chuck Schumer, with all due respect, is not writing the bill, nor is Mitch McConnell, by the way. Uh, so that, that's why we shouldn't have an arbitrary deadline of Wednesday. Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked what happens if there's not enough support for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. She says we're not quite there yet. Two days is a lifetime in Washington. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And looking outside, we actually have a cluster of thunderstorms headed southward towards San Antonio right now, moving through parts of the hill country. You see the wide view really shows it confined to areas north of Highway 90 and a little closer look here does indicate it's very scattered in nature and not really organized. We're not anticipating any severe weather with this. There's, of course, that very off chance that we could have a brief severe storm. This is mainly just some good beneficial soaking rainfall that's uh, hitting parts of the northern portion of our viewing area. And moving into northern San Antonio, what we're watching is this outflow boundary here. That's kicking up its own storms. That's about to head into the north side, the far north side of Bear County. It kicked up this thunderstorm near Canyon Lake, south side of Canyon Lake between the actual lake and about Smithson Valley Middle School. That's pushing southward at about 15 miles per hour. Bergheim, Bernie on the leading edge of some other activity. I'll be back in a few minutes to time that out for you and see when it could get to other parts of San Antonio. Temperature wise, we're mostly in the 90s out ahead of those storms and more rain chances to talk about as well. We'll get into that in a bit. Thanks so much, Adam. Cell phones, they keep us in touch with family and friends and there's an app for just about everything. But perhaps one of the most used features on your phone is your camera. These days, cell phone cameras come with a lot of settings. It can be confusing. Up next, tips on how to get the best quality pics right on your phone. The vacation shots, the kids, don't forget about the pets. Chances are you're taking more pictures than ever these days and you're using your cell phone. The cameras and editing tools are more sophisticated than ever, but what good are features if you don't know how to use them? Delve on your size, Marilyn Morris, with how to maximize your camera and the pictures you take everywhere. Look familiar? Bad photos, we all take them. Smartphones now have a lot of advanced features that you used to find only on higher end cameras that pros use. But you may not even know about them, much less how to use them. Take portrait mode, what does that do? It uses the bokeh effect to blur the background, which really makes your subject pop. 
To use it, just tap the word portrait under the viewfinder, then tap the subject so the camera knows what to focus on. Some phones even let you add this effect after you've taken the picture. Another great feature is night mode. That leaves the shutter open longer to let in more light. You'll need a steady hand for this. Either lock your elbows at your side or better yet, use a tripod. Another tip, to zoom in, don't pinch the screen. Instead, use your camera's optical zoom. That's the telephoto lens labeled 2X or 3X. If you don't have that feature, get closer or crop it later so you don't lose resolution. If you need a new phone, you don't have to spend a lot to get a quality camera. Besides the pricey top models from Apple and Samsung, Consumer Report says check out Apple's older iPhone XR and the OnePlus 8. Finally, selfies. It can be hard to get just the right angle and push the button at the same time. Most phones have a timer where you can set that. You have three or 10 seconds, and then you have plenty of time to get ready. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Nice job, Marilyn. Picture perfect. Very nice selfie there. All right, you're going to talk about picture perfect. On a hot day, Splash Town is open, but. <laughs> yes, but. <laughs> will it be for much longer with all this rain coming in? Yeah, I give them about another uh, 45 minutes to an hour until they may have to clear out just due to lightning and uh, hearing some thunder off in the distance. Of course, if you hear thunder, that means lightning is within striking distance. So all you got to do is hear that thunder and it's time to go in. Let's talk about the big picture. Let's get right to the maps. I want to take a look at Texas. You can see the activity that's been developing through the day off to the north of us starting to head our way. We have a few factors coming into play here. First, this weak little cold front. Yeah, cool front, whatever you want to call it. Technically cold front heading southward. It's going to slowly crawl its way through our neck of the woods here. Over the next several hours, we're talking this evening on through the night, just crawling its way southward. It's going to add to the rainfall potential. Also, this upper level disturbance is dropping toward us, and that's going to keep keep some rain chances in the forecast for the days ahead. So let's take a look at the radar at the moment, and it's more than just the active showers and thunderstorms that we have out there right now. It's also this outflow boundary that's pushing southward, which is kicking up its own showers and storms. Kerr County just moving into Kerrville right now. Ingram as well, getting some heavy rainfall. That's some of the most lightning we have also along I-35, uh, closer to San Marcos, uh, just moving out of Wimberley, moving through San Marcos. Pretty electrified storm, but nothing severe right now. We talked about Canyon Lake, still some lightning strikes, and I mentioned how you really only need Need to hear the thunder to be within striking distance. Notice these lightning bolts outside the actual rainfall. It doesn't have to be raining for that lightning to be within reach, but this is on the southern side of Canyon Lake between the lake and about Smithson Valley High School and uh, even down closer to the Bear County line. We talked about Bergheim now moving into Fair Oaks Ranch. This stuff is just developing. Last time we checked Fair Oaks Ranch didn't really have a shower, but now they do some heavy rain there right along Ralph Fair Road. Bernie south side of town along I-10 through Champion High School moving toward Geneva School. Some of that heavy rain, but this outflow boundary here that's the wind being pushed out ahead of these storms, basically exhaust from those storms. That's kicking up its own activity. So that's expected to make it to Garden Ridge at about 534, Stone Oak at 535, Lake Hills at about 539, UTSA 541, and Brandeis High School neighborhood and area at about 543. And that's when you'll feel a cooling breeze, the wind kick up a little bit, and of course, possibly have some more development of some thunderstorms along that outflow boundary. Here's our future cast. Of course, this is just one computer rendition, eight o'clock, some scattered showers and thunderstorms still out there. We get to 10 o'clock, widely separated, then midnight to one o'clock, still some development. So we're looking at about 40 to 60% chance as we go through the night and even tomorrow morning. And then our next best chance would be on Thursday, and that's at 40%. Hey, looking north, dark sky. Those are the thunderstorms off to the north. They're moving southward. Just downtown area, give it an hour and a half or so, and we should have skies more like that and even some rain developing. 91 at the airport, dew point is 72, but look at this. Behind that, that, that outflow boundary, 80 in Canyon Lake, 76 in Kerrville. So we have some rain cooled air and outflow, thunderstorm cooled air, but out ahead of it, still well into the 90s. Castroville at 94, along with Divine, Catula's 99, and Del Rio at 99. 
As we go through the evening, scattered showers and thunderstorms as that front slowly moses its way southward. Tomorrow we'll start the day with the best chance being south of San Antonio. Around town only about a 30% chance and we're looking at a 20 to 30% chance during the day tomorrow. Near 90 for the high the next couple of days. Thursday with our best chance of the rain this week at 40%. We're looking at 87 for the high then mid 90s by the weekend. Are you sure it's not May? <laughs> no, it's watch out. It's likely to feel a little more. I don't know that I've ever experienced a July no, like this since I've been haven't. here. All right. Well, Cowboys camp about to open, but there are still some COVID concerns, Greg. Well, we're less than 24 hours where the players have to report, and not all of the players are vaccinated. We're finding out today when we come back, what does that mean for the Cowboys in their training camp in California? And Keldon Johnson saves the day for the USA. Coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. With the Dallas Cowboys set to arrive at the training camp in California tomorrow, we are finding out today they are one of 13 teams in the NFL that have not reached the 85% vaccine threshold, and the Cowboys are one of them. This is so important since it introduces a whole new set of protocols and restrictions for the players who report to camp unvaccinated. This was revealed by former Cowboy wide receiver Michael Irvin in a speech to the merging vets and players in Dallas. While the percentage of unvaccinated players on the Cowboys is unknown, the team will have a lab in Oxnard to test all unvaccinated players on a daily basis and vaccinated players weekly. Unvaccinated players will not be able to leave the team hotel in Oxnard and must wear masks and maintain their distance inside the facility while vaccinated players will not be required to wear a mask and can eat and work out with other players at the team facility. Reporters covering Cowboys California camp are required to be vaccinated and must show proof upon arrival on Tuesday when the players report. The United States men's basketball team is headed to Tokyo for the 2020 Olympics after beating Spain last night in their final tune-up before the summer games. And the hero of that game was the Spurs' Keldon Johnson after losing their first two Olympic exhibition games to Nigeria and Australia and having their rematch against Australia canceled after Bradley Beal was placed in the COVID protocol. Team USA was on rocky ground, but they rallied after being down in Spain at the half 38-36, thanks in part to the play of Ricky Rubio and both Powell and Mark Gasol. It was Johnson who was promoted, by the way, from the select team to the Olympic team after B was sidelined and Kevin Love's calf injury knocked him out of going to Japan, who rallied Team USA. The 21-year-old scored 10 of his 15 points in the third quarter on 7 of 9 shooting overall to help lead Team USA to an 83-76 victory against the number two team according to FIBA rankings. Kelvin Johnson uh, just played a really solid uh, basketball game. You know, he shot if he was open, he made cuts to the bucket. Uh, when he did go to the bucket, he was he was uh, very physical and he was solid in the uh, half court defense. So he had a very, very good night. I'm out here to, you know, be that energy guy and uh, bring life to the team uh, whenever we need it. And, you know, third quarter I came in and and, and we need a spark. And not just saying because, you know, I got some, some, a couple buckets, but just on defense and just talking and everything, you know, just, just trying to bring some kind of energy, some kind of spark so we can get over that hump. And now we're finding out that Zach Levine did not make the team charter to Japan today because he's now in COVID protocol. Uh, so they're seeing if he'll be able to play. They're not sure now. That's going to be a big part of the Olympics. Very much, yeah. unfortunately. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Here's a look at the radar. We've got the thunderstorms north of San Antonio right now. They're moving into northern Bear County. They're pushing south where it's only a matter of time, matter of time until they overspread the rest of town. Tomorrow, some storm chances, but less than today. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. See you at 6.